Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. I want to get the joke out of the way right from the top. What's the difference between ignorance and apathy? Don't know, don't care. So now that won't hang like the sword of Damocles over the rest of the talk with everybody wondering if that's where it's going to end up. It's already gotten there. So probably most of us know the story of Bodhidharma and Emperor Wu. Emperor Wu's about to, uh, you know, ask all this, how much merit did I accumulate? And Bodhidharma says, none whatsoever. And, and Emperor Wu says, so, um, well, so what's the, the great teaching of the Dharma? And Bodhidharma says, vast emptiness, nothing holy. And then Emperor Wu, Emperor Wu, not just Joe Wu, is a little perturbed, shall we say, with Bodhidharma, and asks him, who is this that's so impertinent with me? And Bodhidharma, of course, answers, don't know. The monk Fayan was going on a pilgrimage. So uh, his teacher, Master Dizang, asked, where are you going? And Fayan said, on a pilgrimage. Dizan Ang asked, why? And Fayan said, don't know. The key is, Dizang's next response is the key. Not knowing is most intimate. Intimate, like the front of my hand not going anywhere without the back of my hand following right there with it. Intimate, like right here. Don't know is that kind of intimate. It's, you could say it's our true nature. You could say it's our Buddha nature. You could say it's a whole lot of things that, you know, language doesn't do a very good job of explaining. But I like to think of it myself as my own personal moo uh, from a few things that uh, have uh, been my experience. So I was at a uh, coffee shop in uh, Northampton a couple of years ago. And um, I was sitting facing the counter and my friend was facing the window and uh, she was intently staring out the window. And I should mention that she's a portrait painter and so she's very visually uh, oriented and I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. I sometimes fa uh, suffer from what is referred to as face blindness. Um, like there are certain actors and actresses that I just can't tell the difference between one and the other. Just one of those things. So anyway, she's intently staring like over my shoulder, basically looking at something. So I turn around and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to see what it is that she's looking at so intently. And I think, you know, there must be something going on out in the street, um, you know, in Northampton, it could have been a protest, it wouldn't be the first time. And I'm looking and there's nothing going on out there. Just cars going by, you know, the occasional pedestrian, nothing, 
nothing really worth staring at, I think you could say. So uh, I asked her, so what is it you're staring at? And uh, she, you know, gestures back over my shoulder and says, that, isn't it great? And I turn around and I look out the window again and there's still nothing going on on the street. And so I say, what? Because I'm clever that way sometimes, you know. And she said it was this like leaded glass thing, but it wasn't stained glass. It was all just clear, but there was some sort of leaded thing going on and uh, it made some sort of pattern or shape or image of something, which I was totally unable to perceive what it was. And that's a real sort of concrete, mundane sort of don't know. It's like, yeah, I really, I was at a loss. When there's most things that come all, all along our way, we, I think, try and make sense of it and have some sort of, like, I know, like, I know what that thing is over there because it gives me some sort of comfort to think that I know something. Um, that total lack of certainty it's actually pretty cool. Um, in our practice, we work with Huadu, which is some sort of word head, key phrase, like, what is this? Um, who am I? Any number of other things like that that are very pointed questions that uh, seek to put a barb into what we think we know. But once you know that the question is coming, or you're aware that the question is coming, I suppose would be better, um, it's real easy to do a just pro forma, reflexive, what is this? Don't know. What is this? Don't know. Who am I? Don't know. And that's all well and good, but we're still settling on a pattern where we know what the question is, we know what the answer is that's going to be acceptable to the teacher, so we just spit it out like a parrot. And that's really not the point. I mean, there's plenty of kongans where the correct answer is slapping the floor or yelling cuts or something else along those lines. And as soon as cuts or slap floor becomes a habit rather than a deeply felt, I wouldn't say emotion, but something deeply felt. Emotion is a misleading word in that case. We want to avoid the conceptual don't know and get to that uh, deep felt, what is that piece of leaded glass thing on the, on the wall? I can't make heads or tails out of it. That sort of don't know. How do we leave ourselves open and vulnerable enough to face that, that total lack of certitude. It's uncomfortable, right? If it's something that is a matter of life and death, for example, not knowing what that ferocious beast and whether it wants to eat you or not coming straight at you is uncomfortable. Where do we become comfortable with that 
I don't freaking know what's coming next. It's not easy, but gotta do it. Um, a teacher of mine once asked, asked me in, in sort of a Kongan, uh, I didn't know it at the time. I thought it was just sort of a, you know, quiz back and forth, like, you know, he was checking me or whatever. I don't know. I thought he just asked some pointed questions and wanted answers from me. And I, I guess it could have been a Kongan, but the question was, what does the great Bodhisattva have to stand on? And of course, as the astute young Zen student I was at the time, you can probably predict what the answers were. You know, this shore, that shore, the raft, um, any number of other things that, you know, would all make sense in that conceptual sort of way that we still like to rely on. And I just regurgitated back exactly, you know, what I figured he would want to hear. And um, yeah, none of those answers were acceptable, of course. And then finally, at some point, probably with some prompting from him, the answer came out. What does the great Bodhisattva have to stand on? Nothing. Nothing. Well, that's not very reassuring, is it? Thinking that the great Bodhisattva has nothing to stand on? What the hell? I mean, can't you rely on anything? I mean, you think you're standing on a three-legged stool, and then the next thing you know, Oops, it's only a two-legged stool. Oh, wait, it's only a one-legged stool. Oh, hell. Not only are there no legs, there is no stool. And the next thing you know, you're a wily coyote running off the cliff with the legs still running. And there's, well, you're out of dirt. And there's just the air next to where the cliff ends. And you, and then, Plop. That wild e coyote moment of don't know. That, oh, it's a three legged stool. No, it's a two legged stool. No, it's a one legged stool. Oh, hell, there's no stool. Plop. Kind of don't know. It's very unsettling. We want to be able to have something to stand on, that we can count on, that can we, we can rely on. And it ain't there. So do we go into total apocalypse now? The horror. The horror mode. Or... Do we become comfortable with this don't know? Do we stop attaching to the fact that we don't know so much, causing us to care about it because it feels so uncomfortable? Can we stop caring about things that make us uncomfortable? I'm not going to answer that because we know where that was headed, don't we? We know what we all thought in our heads when I said that, right? So, reality doesn't need my validation to be reality, right? Whether I like it, whether I don't like it, whether... I'm even perceiving it remotely close to reality is reality just doesn't care.
I mean, we've gone through in the last year plus some of the most uncertain, what do I have to stand on? Oh, hell, nothing years in, you know, recent memory anyway. We don't know if we're going to be healthy or sick. We don't know if anyone we know is healthy or sick. And we don't know if we came in contact with somebody who is sick. And we have all these things that normally wouldn't be an issue. And yet now here we are in the midst of this great pandemic, don't know. All of the political structures that we've just taken for granted that they're going to be there and doing what they do. Well, not if you look at, I don't know, the US Capitol or Myanmar more recently, or Syria from any number of years now. The more we think we have something to stand on, the more of an illusion, of an illusion we are under. And it's easy to fall into something like, oh, woe is me, and feel sorry for myself because, you know, I'd really like something to stand on. It would be really reassuring, boo-hoo. But that's not our practice, right? In, in our order here, our practice is don't know. And it's that personal move, heartfelt, holy crap, don't know. The, uh, the wooden and stone Buddhas on the altar there, and any Buddha statue that there might be, they always seem to have this sort of little half smile, right? That's the sort of don't care that we're looking for, equanimity. And it's not a lack of concern. It's not a uh, denial that some things are going on that maybe we could do something about. But it's the non-attachment to what we think is right. It's the non-attachment to uh, our knowing what we think is right. We've got to accept reality. We don't necessarily have to settle for it, though. But at the heart of it all, we maintain that deeply felt don't know, that personal move, that personal realization of shunyata or emptiness, that sort of wild e coyote running off the cliff moment of, oh hell, there really is nothing to stand on. And that's okay. It just is. We move on in the next moment and we do the right thing. And how may I help you? is what should be coming out of our mouths, not, oh, woe is me, I'm so scared because don't know. We're not ignorant, we're not apathetic, but truly, we don't know. And that's where we have to keep our practice. <laughs>